Hey there, welcome to this lesson on bond polarity. Question of the day, what is the definition of electronegativity? And then how will an electronegativity affect electrons in a shared fluorine hydrogen bond? Just like in real life, sharing is not always fair or equal. Atoms who are asked to share electrons don't always play nice, and that is going to be based on their electronegativity values. Remember, electronegativity is defined as the attraction for electrons in a bond. So um, the electronegativity value is going to be derived from the size of the atom. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity on the periodic table because for her size, she has the greatest effective nuclear charge, meaning she has, a, or her nucleus has a really good hold on the seven valence electrons that she has, and she's able to pull in one more to fill out her octet. So she has a really, really, really high electronegativity value. She just gathers up electrons. Well, one electron, but she snatches it real quick. So if fluorine is bonded to another atom, they're going to be fighting over, or if it's bonded to a non-metal, I should say, um, they're going to be fighting over that shared electron. Fluorine's going to win because she's got a really high electronegativity. You got an electron, she's going to snatch it. Not to the point where it is a ionic bond. She can't entirely steal an electron from a non-metal, but it's very close to that. We can determine if an electron is being shared fairly or if one atom is kind of hogging the electron by using BEND. BEND stands for Bond Electronegativity Difference. And you just take the difference by subtracting the two electronegativity values. Because our electrons are not being entirely transferred from one atom to the other, and they're being shared, the um, charge is not a full charge. Instead, it's a partial charge. So if we think of fluorine bonded to hydrogen, fluorine has a really, really, really high electronegativity. So she may have the electron 90% of the time, and hydrogen has it 10% of the time. I don't know that anybody has come up with numbers to describe this. I'm just ballparking here. So she's really strong. She's going to have this electron, let's say, 90% of the time. She doesn't have it 100% of the time. 100% of the time would give her a full negative charge. But because she's only like 90% negative, we would give that a partial charge. That's what we call it. We use this symbol, which kind of looks like an unfinished eight. I believe that is delta, the lowercase delta. And it is going to indicate that we have a partial charge. So that's going to be put on the element that is more electronegative that is going to hog the shared electron. And then conversely, the element that is mostly losing the tug of war on this electron is going to wind up with a partial positive. The electron has not been entirely removed, so it's not a full positive. It's just mostly removed, so it's a partial positive. When we have shared electrons that are not shared equally or fairly, we are going to call that a polar bond. Now, I know that sounds a little bit weird, and it's going to sound weirder in a second, but work with me here. Um, polar really means opposite. Think polar opposites. Um, we have a north pole and a south pole. North and south are opposites. So in this case, we have hydrogen bonded to chlorine. We know chlorine has a very high electronegativity, much higher than hydrogen. So chlorine is going to, um, the, the green electrons belong to chlorine and the blue one belongs to hydrogen. Chlorine says, uh-uh, uh, that's really my electron. Nice try, hydrogen. So because chlorine is much more negative than hydrogen is, this is going to be a polar bond because we are forming a positive region on the hydrogen and a negative region in the chlorine. We're putting charges on it. So it's going to have opposite ends, a positive and a negative. If we consider those shared electrons to be in a tug of war, chlorine's gonna win. Um, chlorine has a higher electronegativity value measured at 3.2 and hydrogen is 2.2, meaning that chlorine is going to win this tug of war on the electrons. A lot of the time we'll draw that as an arrow and the arrow is going to indicate the direction of the negative charge or the direction that the electrons are being pulled. 
And typically we're going to put like a vertical stopper on the back of the arrow indicating that that's going to be the positive region. So the hydrogen is going to have its electrons kind of stolen from it. Not exactly. Um, borrowed without asking, let's say. Um, so hydrogen's electrons are borrowed without asking and chlorine is going to hog them. So chlorine is going to wind up being the negative region of this bond. When we subtract the electronegativity values, we are going to come out with 1.0. And knowing that the electronegativity scale is only like 3.3 .3 in difference between the highest and the lowest, that's really a big difference. Because the bend value is high or the bond electronegativity difference is high, the result is a polar bond where we have a positive and a negative pole. Because hydrogen's electron wasn't entirely stolen, it's a partial positive. And because chlorine hasn't entirely stolen the electron, it is a partial negative. And that's how you'd indicate it. Now, let's say we have two elements that have the same electronegativity value, perhaps a diatomic element. Chlorine, in this case, is bonded to another chlorine. And we are going to have an equal sharing of electrons because they have the exact same strength. Their electronegativity value is the strength that they have in this tug of war, and each chlorine has a strength of 3.2. Nobody can win the tug of war, so there will be no poles, hence the fact that we call this a nonpolar bond. Again, both of these atoms are going to pull on the shared electrons with the exact same strength. Our bend value or bond electronegativity difference value is zero, and this has no poles. There is no difference in the strength, and because this is a nonpolar bond, it indicates that there's no poles. There's no positive and no negative region on this bond. That's really it. That's how you determine if a bond is polar or nonpolar. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson on molecule polarity, which is kind of the same thing, but a little bit more complex. Hope to see you there. Bye.